There we go. Uh, what's going on everybody? Thought I would do something a little different for this week's video. I uh, wanted to do a what's in my box tour. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this box right here. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen the big black toolbox behind me. Sometimes I'll go back there, grab tools out of there. That's where all my air tools are and all, pretty much all my hand tools. I've always liked seeing what kind of tools people are using and always find it interesting, especially if I see something that's unique or something I haven't seen before. And uh, shop tours as well is always pretty cool. So hopefully you will find that interesting as well. And let's just go over there and check it out. So starting off with the top, I haven't had this toolbox for a long time. Um, it's not completely full and the top is pretty much empty. It's just where I keep my electric drills. Got two Makita drills here. One's just a regular drill. One is a impact driver. And then over here is a charger and a battery for my snap-on drill that I don't have right now. It's actually at my house because I was doing a little bit of work there. I can already tell this camera is going to get heavy. All right, moving straight down. What's in here? Nothing. Moving on to the top right, it's just kind of a, kind of a junk drawer. Got some helmet hood batteries, uh, just some random stuff here. This is actually a tire gauge off of a Mustang I used to have that I forgot to put back in it when I sold the car. So whoever ended up with that Mustang, I'm sorry. Moving on, this is the wrench drawer. It's probably the most messy drawer in the toolbox right now because I really don't have a good way to organize all these. I have them all mixed up, metric, standard, uh, ratchet wrenches, everything's, everything's in here. It's a mixture of Snap-on and Bluepoint. I have so many Snap-on and Bluepoint tools because I went to a school when I first moved to North Carolina that actually gave you a 50% off discount on all Snap-on when you graduated. So that's how I ended up with a bunch of stuff. I actually had a Snap-on toolbox at that point that I bought and I ended up selling it to buy a go-kart. It was probably not a good idea. Moving over here, this is just the screwdriver drawer. Uh, I have some nut drivers here, a couple missing, they're probably laying around the shop, and then just some screwdrivers, not much in that drawer. Right here is all my Allen wrenches or Allen keys, I don't know what you call them. Probably a waste of a big drawer right now, but like I said, once I get some more organization methods or trays, I'll probably move around a lot of these regular uh, mechanic tools. Over here, I guess you could call it the semi-temporary electric drawer because there's not much right now. And then some chalking line. I don't know why that's in that drawer. This is just a soldering kit that I bought because I was trying to fix a drone that I crashed and turns out I couldn't actually get it fixed. That's about that's all that's in that one. Right below it is kind of the tape drawer and our nitro gloves for cleaning material. This is some double-sided tape. This is actually gaffer's tape but really it's cloth tape. I don't know if you've ever used it before, but it's super nice. Works a lot better than duct tape, especially for semi-temporary applications, and it doesn't really leave a residue as long as you don't leave it on something for a year, and tears real nice, super handy. Gaffers are people who help on movie sets, and they will use this to tape down cords, tape up deflectors, just all kinds of stuff they use this on, you know, TV production, movie sets, stuff like that. Right here is my socket drawer. This one's a little bit more organized than the wrenches, but same deal, all Snap-on stuff that I was lucky enough to get at half off when I graduated, all besides these. These are a Craftsman set of sockets. Some of this I've actually bought after the fact, like these bigger half-inch drive ratchets, because Snap-on and Mac are pretty much what would come to our shop, so it was the most convenient to get, and it's nice stuff, obviously very expensive. So the way I have my box organized right now is the top is more like mechanic hand tools, you know, like the wrenches and the socket sets and stuff like that, screwdrivers. And the bottom is kind of all my fabrication stuff, starting off with the big drawer with all my air tools. I would say this is definitely the tools I use the most out of this box. Uh, that's why there's so many of them. It's stuff I've collected over the years. A lot of stuff I've had since the very beginning. Some stuff, unfortunately, didn't survive you know, the years, whether it wasn't oiled or just some kind of failure, I don't know. I don't know, air tools wear out, it happens. But starting over here, this is a snap-on cud crutter. Uh, I thought this would work a little bit better for kind of taking off mill scale. It doesn't really work like that. I kind of think it's for 
like auto body repair more so, cleaning out Bondo and stuff, getting into cracks. So it will become useful if I ever get to working on the truck behind me. A little Mac tool air saw. Um, back when we used to have to cut out a lot of the ductwork openings out of the composite noses, you would use this to cut out the opening and then build all the aluminum ductwork to fill in the area to get air to the radiator. Mac tools angle drill. This is very useful when building ductwork because you are often in tight spaces and you're trying to drill little eighth inch rivet holes. So you often have to reach in and with very little room, drill at an angle where you couldn't get a full size drill in there and it leaves you enough room you can get a pop rivet gun on there. A few snap on air drills. I like using these in certain situations. I have been using the battery powered more instead of these, but if you're doing a lot of drilling all day long, and you do have access to an airline, you don't have to worry about charging your battery. It just kind of works all day. This is just a little vacuum. Like if you're using an airline already to drill a little bit of holes, you can just plug it into your vacuum and clean up any little metal shavings you get so you're not sitting on them if you're working on the floor or whatever inside of a car. Air chisel. It doesn't have the uh, attachment for it right now, but if you actually put a V attachment in here, you can cut all the way through sheet metal. Like if you're trying to tear a door off of a wrecked car or something like that, there's a lot of uses for these that you wouldn't even think about. Angle grinder, this one's got a two inch roll lock attachment on it. Just a standard angle grinder. This one is a Mac straight die grinder. This one has a wire brush in it for cleaning down in cracks that maybe I'm gonna weld on steel or something or uh, yeah, just getting down into tight areas. Same thing as a missing one. Same thing as this one. So you can put different attachments in these. You could also put a cutoff wheel attachment and pretty much make it the same as this, where this one is a dedicated cutoff wheel. You see it has an arbor that screws right through the wheel. Where these you would put the attachment into here and then you can change it out for other things. I don't know what the advantage or disadvantage of both of these are. This one's kind of dedicated single purpose and these are kind of multi-purpose. Lots of varying angle grinders with different attachments in them. This one's just a little Scotch-Brite ball that you get down into really tight areas. Sometimes if you had inside of like a fillet weld, maybe with three sides and you want to get right into that corner to get a little bit of the mill scale cleaned off or something to start the weld there, this would help. It's just a wire brush. One of my favorite tools is my handheld belt sander. Uh, this is a half inch wide belt. It's actually wore off because I've used the edge so much. But this thing is great for getting down into all different kinds of tight, tight areas. Inside of tubing, you can clean the burrs out pretty much on really tiny tubing too, real, real easy, rather than having to use a file or something. More angle grinders. These have three inch roll locks put on them. One's got a scotch Brite pad. One just has a regular 50 grit sandpaper disc. That way you don't have to switch out the disc so much. Maybe my second favorite tool, these could be, these could be tied, is my extended cutoff wheel. You've probably seen me use this one a lot. Uh, I actually took the guard off of it. I don't recommend doing that, but uh, I try to keep my face out of line of the disc at all times. But I just really like the ergonomics of the extension, how you can hold it. I feel more precise. I can watch my cut while I'm kind of guiding it versus you know something like this. It's just not, there's not as many nice ways to hang on to it. I just really like the way this works. This probably has a little bit more power since this has to send its power up and then through, through some kind of gears to turn it 90 degrees. I'm sure it loses a little bit because of that. This is a grease gun. It's made for air tools. There's different companies that make these. This one's Matco, but this just greases the head of all these angle grinders to keep grease in there. Right now, I'm pretty sure I just have Mobile One wheel bearing grease in there. Don't know what you're actually supposed to use, but I've never had a problem using that. And then big four inch air grinder. Left the guard on this one, especially because of how close the trigger is to the wheel. I feel like if you took the guard off there, you'd just be asking for trouble. But this thing's got a lot of power. When you really need to move some material, it helps. Um, if you have a big enough air compressor, I would say it's on par with an electric one but uh, it definitely will use some air. So if you don't have a big air compressor, you'll be running your air compressor a lot, waiting for it to catch up a lot. That's the one disadvantage of air tools is you do have to have a big air compressor. Speaking of, I wanted to talk about the fittings. I use AO fittings. The three main ones are AO, automotive, and industrial. 
I don't know why, it's just what the last race team I worked on used and a few other ones. So that's just what I stuck with here in my shop. My favorite part is these quick release couplers. This one's made by Milton. And I don't know if you can get these for the automotive and the industrial or not. I haven't seen them. First time I saw them was when I started using these AO. And the big advantage of them is normally to release an air tool, you pull this down, pull it off. And then on a standard one, you kind of have to pull down and stick it in and let go, which takes time if you're changing these out a lot. This one, you just stick it in. Super easy. But yeah, you can see how much faster that is. Moving down, this is the kind of tin snip plier drawer. We see you have all the red right-handed tin snips, the green left-handed ones. I have one straight one that I've maybe never used. It's definitely possible I've never used it. I like to take an old pair of tin snips that I normally would throw away and I label them wire because like if you cut grill screen in race car instances or anything, that would be hard on tin snips, but tin snips can be convenient for a lot of stuff that wrecks them. So just keep one pair labeled wire. That way if it chews up the blade a little bit, it's not a huge deal. Have a couple pairs of Nipex here. These are super handy. These can cut eighth inch stainless TIG rod, no problem. It's kind of like little handheld bolt cutters. Like I've cut some heavy duty stuff in here and I feel like I haven't damaged these teeth at all. And then this is just a sideways pair of them. If you haven't seen one of these, this is what the pop rivet gun looks like that I was talking about earlier. Lots of pop rivets in racing. It's pretty much how all the aluminum paneling is held together. You can get air versions of these, but these are kind of the most common. This little guy is a nibbler. I need to find a little piece of metal I can demonstrate it. Here's a little piece of scrap. This can be a super handy tool. I think this is probably, I don't know, 50 thousandths aluminum maybe. But say you just need to notch out something and with 10 snips, it'd be really hard to go up, over and down. This little nibbler slides in like this and then just and takes it out in little chunks. If you're one of those people that's adverse to having little 90 degree corners, you could always drill a hole the same width as this, the same quarter inch width and nibble down to it. But yeah, super handy. You can do curves pretty easy with it too. All right, coming over here, not much in this drawer. Digital calipers, kind of a measuring drawer, a square, tape measure, big tape measure. Don't really ever use this when working with metal unless it's something really big. Down here is a drawer full of files and deburrs. If we had our little piece of scrap here and wanted to deburr it, we just take one of these and you can get off that edge. You don't cut yourself. Right here is probably the second most unorganized drawer, and that's the vice grip drawer. I have all different sizes of vice grips and clamps in here. As you can see, I keep them pretty tight. And the reason I do that is I always lock my vice grips before they go back in the drawer. That way they don't spring open while they're in the drawer. And then these handles can more easily get hooked inside your toolbox, and then you have a problem trying to get your drawer open. So, it's a tip if you don't already do it, just keep all your vice grips locked. This is just a little pop rivet kit. Uh, it's got some Clecos in it. These are like temporary pop rivets where you can drill a hole and then put this in it and it'll hold whatever you're doing while you drill more holes without actually putting a permanent pop rivet in it right away. There's special pliers that go with these that I don't see right now. Hammer drawer, got a couple ball peen hammers, probably my most used hammer for metalworking. Dead blow with two different type ends on it. And then some body hammers, which is great for hammering out some sheet metal. I don't do a lot of metal forming right now, but these even work if you tin snip an edge and you get that little like rough edge from the cutters on it, or if it rolls it up a little bit because you're cutting a curve, you can take a die, I guess it's called, it's a flat surface or top of an anvil, and use these, which has got a very slight radius on it, and, and you're not supposed to hit them together like that, but 
and smooth out that aluminum edge and almost make it back to perfectly flat. This is more for inside of corners on metalworking, metal shaping. This is a big die I made a while back. You clamp it in your vise and you can form all different kinds of things around here. I hardened this piece the best I could at the time. So it's held up pretty well. Right here I have some spare welding consumables, extra pack of tungsten replacement lenses for my panel helmet from Blue Demon. Yeah, that's pretty much all that is. Most of my consumables are over by the welder, but this is just kind of the, the extras. Down here, biggest thing is the tap and die set. All different kinds of taps and dies. And up here is a screw extractor set where you, if you break off ahead of a bolt or strip out a screw, you can drill a hole, put one of these extractors in it, and hopefully back it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Torque wrench. I don't use it very much, but I have it just in case. That's a half inch torque wrench, this is a quarter inch torque wrench. This is a tint checker. From back when we had the print shop, we tried doing some tint installing. So I can check to see if you're legal or not. And a Whitney punch. This is pretty much just a hole punch set for punching into sheet metal. And you can put all these different dies in there and punch out a lot of holes and repetitive holes because it has a backstop and not have to use a drill bit all day long. You know, very situational, but can be very handy. Not much over here, some liquid nail that I threw in there for some reason. Uh, an extra Fronius TIG torch. This, if you're doing a lot of, like this is drip check. It uses, it's like seam sealer or little, little tubes of silicone. You can put them in this thing made by Valco in Cincinnati. Pretty much it squeezes the tube like this. This would be kind of cool to have in your house for toothpaste. <laughs> you could put the tube, cause it's the exact same thing. And when it's done, you keep sliding it in there and it'll be perfectly flat empty on the way out. And you'll have just, you'll use every drop that's in any kind of tube that's shaped like this. All right, down here, a little bit of randomness, extra regulator, a temperature gun, kind of like for checking track temp, stuff like that, or seeing if someone has Corona, a MIG welding regulator, electric stapler, a coping saw, a couple hacksaws, and this is an electric shear. Kind of works the same as the nibbler, where it's about a quarter inch wide, and this just goes up and down real fast, and you can cut through long pieces of sheet metal real fast and do some pretty intricate curves with it too. Super handy. They also make pneumatic versions of these, but yeah, I've used this a bunch. It makes a real nice, smooth cut. The disadvantage is you are losing that width of material as you go, so you have to compensate for that. And then the advantage of that is, as opposed to hand shears, you're not rolling up one side of the metal as much. Below that, this is kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. Uh, this is just a brad nailer from when I was doing some work at my house. Makita jigsaw, a heat gun, a hammer drill. Another thing that I often need, like the walls in here are concrete, just got a corded one because corded ones are way cheaper than battery ones for how much I use it. Big air sander with these flat discs on it that I don't use very much. Now here's my four inch cutoff wheel slash grinder plug-in from Makita. Since my air compressor isn't gigantic, if I have a lot of cutting by hand or grinding to do, this is what I'll use since it'll run all day. Orbital sander. And there's the Clico pliers we were missing. How these work real quick, you have to have the right Clico for the hole you're using. So this one's an eighth inch. And you'll drill your eighth inch hole through your two pieces of material. Put this in the pliers and this will go straight in the hole and you release it. And this holds back and holds your two pieces together. Uh, if you've ever seen some hot rod builders or stuff, sometimes you'll see like hundreds of these sticking out all over the car. That's just because they're kind of positioning their panels before they actually either rivet them or tack weld them together. And then in the case of welding, they might tack it all together and then just tack weld those little tiny holes up right at the end that they needed for this. But uh, super fast, very helpful if you're doing a lot of sheet metal work. Last drawer, nothing special. Right now it's just my chemical storage. Nothing crazy in here. I have my cans of shark hide that I love, metal protectant. Uh, I've used it in a few videos and different projects that I don't want to paint. 
you just spray this on, protects it from rusting, and if you ever do want to paint it, it cleans off pretty easy with some acetone or lacquer thinner. And that's what's in my toolbox as of today. Of course, it's always evolving. Like you saw, I have some organization to do. I do have some tools scattered around that I don't use a lot that could be moved into the main box. Maybe get some of that woodworking tools out of there. I don't know, we'll see. I would love to see what you guys have going on. If you're on Instagram, maybe do a little box tour on your story, tag me, I'll share them, and we can all kind of see what we all have going on. Um, maybe post some of your favorite tools or something that you have that's unique. I, I would just like to see it, I don't know. If you care to share it, tag me on Instagram, at JustVoss, I'll be sure to check it out. Before I go, I just want to thank the new channel members who have signed up and joined the Dime Crew. It's incredible that there's people out there as generous as you guys who are willing to pay five bucks a month to help support this channel. It greatly helps me create more content, keep going, keep getting more consistent. You know, metalworking and the equipment involved isn't always the cheapest thing, like you guys know that, but a lot of the stuff I'm making is for video and to hopefully bring entertainment and content to you guys. It's not like it's a paying job that I'm selling to somebody, so your guys' support helps immensely. If you're new to my channel and you don't wanna miss a video, I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you wanna see more videos like this one or something else of mine that you might be interested in, you can go ahead and click this video right here. But that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.